Hello guys, it's me, Red the Ebedonosaur, and today with the fourth epic episode of the Rambles and Revs podcast. My personal podcast where I just talk about things that I I want to talk. <laughs> uh, uh, Motorsports, video games, other stuff that I just want to dedicate more time. And today I want to dedicate this episode to a game that actually made me recover the hope to one of my favorite franchises. And today is dedicated to Gran Turismo Sport. The game closed its servers the 31st of January of 2024. And in with the difference of the Crew 1 that is going to close its servers this year as well, I think it's going to close it in March. So maybe I'm going to make a, a playthrough of the Crew 1 soon. I don't know, I but, but maybe I will do it. So... Just leave it aside that uh, this this franchise, well, this game especially made me recover a lot of hope, especially on a franchise that I thought it was completely gone for. Because Gran Turismo 5 and 6 were a big letdown for me. Sure, Gran Turismo 5 has had a huge improvement in terms of online, and it still is remembered for that, for having such a quirky and very funny uh, lobbies with we uh, yeah with modded cars and all that stuff and Gran Turismo 6 was kind of like that but it was even worse than than 5 for me especially so when Gran Turismo Sport got announced I was like oh boy well this is not Gran Turismo 7 and this is going to be just more of the same Recycled cars, really bad sounds, all that bad stuff. But I decided to just give it a chance. I got, I got my PlayStation 4 ordered by then, that was kind of new. And I was like, you know, let's actually order the game and see what it's gonna be. So I ordered the game with nearby in a store nearby my home where the guy was incredibly unprofessional i actually asked him to get me the game on the release date but he decided to just get me the game two weeks later of release so yeah it was a shit show and i and i don't and i wonder why the guy decided to close its store yeah i i, I guess it was the it was the weather i suppose but yeah uh when I got the, the, my hands on the game, my my expectations were very low. I just decided to give it a chance because I have I have played the, all the Gran Turismo games since first when I was very very young, and I just decided to you know let's give it a go. What what bad it can be, and man, that game blew my mind. Uh, like the the graphics, the evolution back then. I know the the car selection was pretty low and this and the tracks were pretty low but at the same time i was like maybe in the future this is a live service game it will get better and it actually get, got better but i was hopeful and i saw that this game had a huge huge dedication to esports to actually be uh, an online racing game to put the to put it basically on the radar of i racing and a set of course uh, in terms of esports and kind of concerned me a bit it was like a, the first time that gran turismo actually went to this direction because back then the online services were more of a bonus more of an extra on this this was like the serious stuff and this actually marked a huge difference to went to January 31st that I'm gonna talk about how the game is today when I basically recorded this video. So as you're seeing right now, I'm basically just navigating through the menu. I recorded this two days before the closure of the servers and I'm just entering two areas that you don't have access anymore if you're playing Gran Turismo Sport on this date 
uh, basically the mileage shop and the gallery and all and basically this type of social media that they try to implement on Gran Turismo Sport can they giving it more this sensation that was more dedicated to online than anything else and it was a big difference and it was difficult to get this reality into because Gran Turismo was always this campaign mode where you get a really cheap car and you try to get the licenses and all that stuff on sport was you don't have any licenses and basically you just jump to a car and the game expected you to just start racing online which was unfortunate because for especially for old Gran Turismo players it was like a huge change because there was no story mode it all was basically online and that was basically a miss step from from Kasinori Yamauchi but they tried to mitigate this this later soon enough with updates but yeah it was pretty difficult especially if you didn't get into the online basically forced you to race online and yeah I actually did that it was really really bad because it was full of rammers and people that just want you to get out you to get out to basically push you out of your of the road is it was it was something else okay it, it was just something else but meanwhile you progress through basically the the basically the how to say the camp not the campaign but like this qualification that you got to do uh, is basically just doing, going through this uh, C to B to A, like basically just this uh, type of qu the of qualifications that you have to do, and basically between you get better li not licensing or so better grades, you get better lobbies because basically the, you get the more professional and competitive people out there. And I remember very well that I really had a huge fight with the penal with the penalty system there. If you think the penalty system on Grand Tr on Forza on Forza Motorsport was bad, man, you have to play Gran Turismo Sport back then in 2017. Like if someone pin you out of the road, the the game actually punish you instead of the rammer and it was really frustrating uh, that got actually better through the ages but it was it, like back then it was pretty stressful but uh, you don't have anything else to do you have to actually play the game of what it was and it was this online portion and i know it doesn't sound like oh well so what what was the part that actually you got your hope back you're gonna say well it was basically the graphics the the gr3 cards back then was like something else uh, it was something that i was looking forward to uh, like all these new race cars and all that stuff and i actually enjoyed that part but i was actually looking forward it was to the library to the library editor that I think to this day is still pretty, pretty advanced. It put in shame like library editors from Need for Speed and Forza Horizon. And I'm speaking really, really huge steps back then in 2017. Like even to this day, Forza Horizon doesn't have that. That you are able to make your own decals on your computer using Illustrator or whatever or, or any other software that lets you design and basically save that same design on an SVG format and if, if that format was less than 15 megabytes if I'm not wrong you are able to upload it to the servers of Gran Turismo and actually use it in the game and put it in a car for me that was fantastic and it was something that that made me open my creative design in some way actually made me more creative creating libraries and actually helped me 
in getting more jobs in my real life because I was actively creating decals on Gran Turismo for Gran Turismo Sport that at the same time made me to just get better skills on Illustrator and it was really really educative for me even when I just decided to put like for example I created these ravens from Teen Titans and just basically uh, play uh, basically just try to draw them in 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 Illustrator to just upload it upload them into the game and it was pretty cool again I, I just I was just cre actively creating libraries and decals for me just to put them on on I remember very well creating like these Raven cars for for in, in a Lexus RCF GT3 and I still have one of them on GT7 just to remind myself of Gran Turismo Sport mostly but it was something that again gave me got me better on a software that sure I got I got the like the basics on my university when I learned of graphic design but it actually for it actually made me better just getting polished those skills on in that specific software you can still do that on Gran Turismo 7 you can actually upload your decals and put them on on Gran Turismo 7 that got ported so but I don't do it anymore because again I'm quite a, a busy man nowadays and I have my I have other stuff to do but sometimes I just grab the grab Illustrator and maybe I just do a, ba a basic design or something and I was actually pretty good at it that I started publishing my decals to to the Gran Turismo Sport uh, sort of social media that they got in the game where you can actually download other people's creations and you can actually apply them to your cars so I basically start publishing really basic stuff basically like these decals that you can use for racing that is just a square uh, where you can put your numbers and and it says G and in one side says year three year four that are the categories that for racing that they got or N500, N600, or GR1, but again, I'm naming the, the categories, and with a simple design, like for example, the GT logo with a transparency, and, and that's it. And I got actually pretty a lot of downloads due to that. And I, and I, and even that, that it wasn't like huge numbers. It still made me proud that people was actually seeing my work and actually liking it. Uh, I also, I also created a lot of uh, uh, a lot of libraries there. Like my most famous one, if I remember, and I still have on GT7 that I published it there, is my Dodge-based uh, uh, Haas Work Formula One car that I basically using the colors of Haas back then in 2019 I decided to just make like a fantasy version where the Formula 1 team of Haas gets booked totally by by Dodge and they decided to full on decorate their their Formula 1 entry with the Hellcat and promoting the Dodge Ram and the Dodge Challenger and, and, and especially the Hellcat cars back then and people kinda actually loved that that design and, and got a lot of a lot of uh, downloads back then and that sensation of learning and at the same time that people kinda actually likes what, what you're doing is what actually made me to just create more to play the game more to a point that i got almost a thousand hours into the game and it was a thousand a thousand hours that i'm super grateful for because it just i i enjoy doing those those libraries and i enjoy playing the game and even when the updates from the future story mode that was this campaign mode 
uh, that you were able to just race offline and play the game without the connection, without the internet connection came up, it still made me to just play the game more and more and more. Something that I'm actually really grateful for is that thanks to Gran Turismo Sport kinda made me know one of the one of the guys that made me inspired to do the my reviews and videos and all that stuff. That guy is Hammer Studios Gaming. I knew him thanks to Gran Turismo Sport. And I saw his reviews of cars, I I saw his updates on Gran Turismo Sport back then. And I saw like, dude, this is a really cool thing to do, you know, make videos about Gran Turismo and you get, and even if you don't do it bombastically, like for example, GTA Online and all that stuff, this guy is very chill and explains it and explains everything with a lot of uh, professionalism and, and security and, and all that, that you know, this is really, really cool. I wish I can do that. And thanks to uh, to Hammer Studios Gaming, I, in some way, I started to create my own channel. I know that GB and Kane and and all my friends also got like a huge inspiration and that push to say, Red, you should, you know, go and create your own content and all that stuff. But Thanks to him, to to Hammer Studios Gaming, I just decided to, you know, let's let's see what we can do, and it was a huge inspiration for me, and I am still very proud even when the ga the guy is still there doing Gran Turismo Seven videos and all that stuff, and I still see his content sometimes. is It's really nice that Gran Turismo Sport gave me a lot of good moments in my life. So when I saw when I got Gran Turismo 7 and I knew that that when the game got announced and the game got released I knew very well that Gran Turismo Sport got its name it, it got its day's number because usually what Polyphony does is that when they announce a new game they totally forgot about the about the old game it happened with Gran Turismo 6 when Gran Turismo Sport got announced. It's happened the same way of, with Gran Turismo 5 when Gran Turismo 6 got announced. And now, nowadays with Gran Turismo 7 with Gran Turismo Sport. I always had this idea that Gran Turismo Sport should actually continue its legacy as more of an online portion for and uh, something that they should focus more for online and competitive uh, online racing and leave Gran Turismo 7 of what it is it, uh, just a story based game based on Gran Turismo 4 to just come to just basically uh, 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 just get the two markets the ones that want online competitive racing but at the same time get the guys that want just a classic Gran Turismo game but they actually got the sport uh, portion for Gran Turismo 7 thanks to Gran Turismo Sport that is basically this portion that you can do your competitive online racing, time trials, all that good stuff and is but overall it was a really really fantastic adventure of Gran Turismo Sport I love that game, again I, I pushed like a thousand hours I followed many of the money guides from youtubers that, that especially hammer studios gaming that he made and put a lot of hours into complete the campaign mode and i know that they released like this dlc of lewis hamilton but i never bought it because i i was not interested into that but there is was a, a lot of things to do on that game even when it wasn't that that big as Gran Turismo 4 it still had something to do and it's something that I appreciate well uh, Gran Turismo Sport also got its some exclusive cars uh, one of them was a Vision Gran Turismo I know Vision Gran Turismo Vision Gran Turismo doesn't it doesn't it sounds is very infamous to this day 
but it was the Fittipaldi. The Fittipaldi was basically the exclusive car of Gran Turismo Sport and is not going to get ported to Gran Turismo 7 unless they get the, the license back because, well, the company that designed the Fittipaldi Vision Gran Turismo got, gam got bankrupt so I don't see that car coming back it's like a Need for Speed Hot Pursuit with this really singular patrol car that they got that you were able to drive but but for some reason they they didn't got the license back because the 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 company that designed such car got bankrupt and for some reason so it was a long story just to say it at least and at the same time they got the the game it has the the Mercedes F1 car is basically it, that car didn't got ported to Gran Turismo 7 and it was more something like a campaign for Grant for basically uh, the Lewis Hamilton DLC that again well that 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 age like like fine fucking uh, milk because well we know Grant Lewis Hamilton is going to to Ferrari <laughs> but yeah back then it was like hey, you, you got the Mercedes F1 car and all that but but overall it was a really really good adventure and thanks to Gran Turismo Sport for existing you gave me the hope back it was thanks to that game that I was actually looking forward for Gran Turismo 7 that is a game that I enjoy that I'm also looking forward to put a thousand hours into that, into it. I hope many more hours. Uh, that even if it has its its flaws and it releases its all, all its shitty updates like the last one, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I know I'm gonna enjoy it. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna ha put a lot of hours into it. Like I still do my hot laps in my 911 GT3 RS on Gran Turismo 7, and yeah. It was a fun adventure to say the least and I'm very very grateful for that. So yeah, let me know in the comment section what do you think about Gran Turismo Sport, if you play it, if you not. But it was it was a really really fun time. And yeah, let's see what it's gonna be for the future. And uh, if you have the game, you're able to play it. It's not like it's gonna be useless. You can get if you have the the physical disc because it's basically the listed from the PlayStation Store. You the only way to get it is basically through the CD. Uh, if you get the CD and or you purchase it and you put and you hook it to your PlayStation 4 or 5, you can still get access to some of the features, especially to the campaign mode. But let's be clear, the campaign mode is not very big. And at the same time, uh, basically 80% of the options for Gran Turismo Sport are unusable. Like the millage, the millage market, uh, I think the escapes are also not be, are not usable anymore because they needed the servers to actually work properly. Uh, you can do you can do libraries anymore because that needed the full uh, server support. So basically, if you get a car, it, it, you you better get ha you better get happy with, of of how it looks. You can just modify it anymore or just change the paint or whatever you want. It's not you are not able to do that anymore because well, as I said, it was part of the server outage that now that is basically unplayable anymore or just not unplayable but more like you're you don't have access anymore because you need the online features that are not that are close to this day but yeah that was cool thanks for stopping by and i really really appreciate your time is spent on the reps and rambles podcast i don't know when it's gonna be the fifth episode maybe when i have like a cool topic that i want to discuss Maybe it's gonna be about the crew one because it's the other game that is gonna disappear pretty soon. But yeah, let's see what is gonna happen. Maybe I'm gonna do a playthrough this February. 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, guys. And yeah, see you on the next one. Goodbye.